Over the years that humans and our ancestors have walked this earth, we have been very good at completely eradicating potential threats and competition. This is part of the reason why many of the animals that once preyed on humans are no longer with us. But of course there are usually many other factors that contribute to recent animal extinctions. In today's video we'll be travelling back in time to take a look at some of the meanest predators that we once shared the planet with, and I'll be trying to figure out if they hunted us or our ancestors. Now because there were no records or reliable evidence that we could use to decipher if these animals predated on man, we will never know for certain, but we can use the limited evidence that we have today to try and make an educated guess. Without further ado, we can take a look at our first predator, and to find it we'll be heading over to Tanzania. Back in 2007, in a gorge in northern Tanzania, a large crocodilian fossil was discovered, and it was later described as Crocodilus anthropopagus in 2010. It's estimated that this croc would have reached a size of around 7.5 meters, which would make it one of the largest true crocs to have ever existed. Of course, there were larger crocodilians in the past, such as the terrible Dinosuchus, but these reptiles were not true crocs and were instead alligatoroid crocodilians. The Tanzanian croc dates back to around 1.8 million years ago, and this is when our early human ancestors existed and could have run into these giants. The crocs were likely the largest predators that our ancestors would have come across in the region, and most experts believe that they would have hunted us. Some scientists were so convinced when they discovered the croc that they gave us a clue in its name, as in Latin its name translates to Eater of Humans. If we take a look at the evidence that we have from modern day crocodilians then it really supports the man-eating theory, as Nile crocodiles claim the lives of more humans than any other crocodile. It's extremely hard to estimate the number of people taken by Nile crocs each year as most attacks happen in remote areas, but most estimates range from around 200 to 700 people a year. It's important to note that modern day Nile crocodiles are smaller than the extinct Tanzanian croc, and we humans are larger than our ancestors of the time. The argument for this crocodile hunting humans is one of the strongest that you'll see in this video, as there appears to be evidence behind the theory. Ancient hominid bones discovered in the area seem to have bite marks that are likely to have come from a large crocodilian, so unless other crocs of the time hunted our ancestors and the Tanzanian croc didn't, this is very strong evidence. Even if, for whatever reason, this particular crocodile didn't like the taste of our ancestors, there were other giant crocs around the same time that would have been as dangerous. This is why I think it's fair to say that at least one of the giant extinct African crocs hunted our ancestors, and the extant crocs still like to take chunks out of us today. The saber-toothed cats have quite a misleading name, as they were not closely related to cats at all. When people talk about saber-toothed cats they are usually referring to animals in the genus Smilodon, which lived in the Americas from around 2.5 million to 8,200 years ago. Smilodon were much more robust and heavy set than any modern day big cat, and of course they had much larger canine teeth. This gives us an idea as to what they preyed on and how they hunted, as it seems as though they had evolved to hunt much larger, more robust animals than any of the modern day big cats. Thanks to the La Brea tar pits we have lots of Smilodon fossils to learn from, and from the fossils we have been able to estimate the true size of these extinct predators, and the possible relationships that they had with other animals of the time. It's believed that the largest Smilodon species could have reached a maximum weight of around 435 kilograms, and at this size they would have been a real threat to humans of the time. It's believed that they mostly focused on hunting different bison and camel species, but they were even able to adapt to hunting new prey when moving into South America, as it's believed that they targeted the giant ground sloths. Smilodon were likely ambush predators, and it's believed that they would have similar techniques to modern day animals such as lions, and would hide in vegetation while slowly getting closer to their desired prey. Saber-toothed predators such as Smilodon shared North and South America with early humans, but finding out the exact relationship that we had with them has proven to be extremely difficult. Some experts believe that we could have been prey or competitors to the formidable Smilodon, and others believe that we could have been part of the reason behind their extinction, either directly or indirectly. Today big cat attacks on humans are relatively rare but do happen, and it's possible that the relationship that we have with modern day big cats would have been similar to the relationship that early humans had with Smilodon. 
Most big cats don't seek out humans as their main source of food, but they are opportunistic and if they come across a human in the wild then they sometimes choose to attack. In places around the world where there is human-wildlife conflict involving cats, locals will usually retaliate to attacks by grouping together and going after the cats. It's possible that this would have been the response of our ancestors, and even though a lone human isn't much threat to a Smilodon species, a group of early humans with spears is more than a little dangerous. It's also likely that early humans would have gone after Smilodon and other saber-toothed predators as they were direct competition, and it's also possible that we challenged them for kills. It looks as though we'll never have a definitive answer for the question of if Smilodon hunted man, but it's fascinating to imagine how early man interacted with these beasts. Bears are among the most formidable land predators across many modern day ecosystems, but at one point in time they were a lot deadlier and a lot larger. There were a few different groups of bears that would have been a threat to early man, and one group of bears that you wouldn't want to run into are the short-faced bears. Some of the short-faced bears of the Pleistocene were around the same size as modern day bears, but some of the largest, such as the giant short-faced bear, could stand at 4 meters tall and could weigh up to 1.6 metric tons. Not only were they giant, but they were also extremely fast, as it's estimated that they could run at around 65 kilometers per hour. This would have been one of the most terrible sights of the time, because not only would these bears tower over you, but they'd also be able to easily outrun you and manhandle you. If you saw one of these bears and you weren't close to shelter, then really your life would completely be in their paws, and they hunted most of the megafauna in their ecosystem. Like most modern day bears, they were thought to be omnivorous, but it's likely that they had a preference for meat. There's no definitive evidence to suggest that the giant short-faced bear hunted humans, but based on what we know about them, I believe it's more than likely. If I were to tell you that there's still a short-faced bear roaming the earth today, then it might be a shock to some, but the modern-day short-faced bear is a relatively gentle creature. The spectacled bear is the last remaining short-faced bear, and it's native to the Andes Mountains in northern and western South America. Unlike their relatives, the majority of their diet consists of plant matter, with only around 5% of their diet being made up of meat. Despite this, there have been a few cases where they have attacked tapirs and cattle in their native range, but attacks on humans are extremely rare. They are one of the least aggressive of all bear species towards humans, with only one reported human fatality since records began. The bear involved in this attack was being hunted at the time and was already shot, so really I think it's understandable why the bear retaliated. If the giant short-faced bears had the same temperament as the spectacled bear then it's very unlikely that they hunted early humans, but these two bears are adapted to completely different ecosystems and have completely different body shapes and diets. Personally, I think it's very likely that the giant short-faced bears hunted our ancestors, but I don't believe that this is true for all short-faced bears. You'll have to let me know what you think in the comments down below, but I think it's fair to say that this bear could take down a human with ease. Today, if you look hard enough, you can find some deadly venomous lizards that stalk the islands of Southeast Asia, but there was once a much larger lizard that hunted the megafauna of Australia. Megalania is an extinct species of giant monitor lizard, and it was the apex predator of its time. It's believed that the Komodo dragon may be its closest living relative, and it's likely that they would have had a very similar appearance, but they did get a lot larger. The largest specimens could have reached lengths of around 4.5 to 7 meters long, and at this size they could have preyed on pretty much anything they wished to. Like many other places around the world, Australia was once home to a wide variety of megafauna, many of which are extinct today. There were giant wombat and kangaroo relatives, and there were also giant marsupial ambush predators. If we take a look at the Komodo dragon then we can get an idea as to how Megalania acted and hunted, and based on this evidence it must have been a terrifying reptile. Komodo dragons hunt prey many times their own size, and their mildly toxic venom helps them to do this. In some very rare cases, they have been known to claim the lives of humans, and they have a habit of digging up corpses that have been recently buried. 
If a much smaller relative is able to predate on humans, then it would be relatively easy for Megalania. And based on what the Komodo dragon preys on, it's likely that they would have been able to feed on almost all of the Australian megafauna. Megalania and early humans overlapped in time in Pleistocene Australia, but yet again there is no solid evidence to suggest that they hunted our ancestors. Megalania went extinct soon after the arrival of humans in Australia, with some experts suggesting that we might have played a role in their extinction. Giant predators of the Pleistocene were totally reliant on giant prey, so when their prey started to disappear then they soon followed suit. There were many theories as to why most of the Pleistocene megafauna disappeared, but it was likely due to climate change, environmental shifts and possibly human hunting. So even if these giant lizards did predate on early man for a short period of time, it seems as though humans had the last laugh. Hyenas are pretty misunderstood creatures, with many of us seeing them as scavengers and nothing more. This couldn't be further from the truth as spotted hyenas hunt more than lions do, and they are capable of taking down some of the most formidable animals on the African continent. Like most modern day predators, the spotted hyena has a much larger, extinct relative, and for once it appears that there might be some evidence to suggest that they hunted early man. The short-faced hyenas were a genus of giant hyenas, with the most well-known and studied species being the giant short-faced hyena. This beast stood at around 1 meter at the shoulder, and it weighed in at around 110 kilograms. This is around the same size as a modern day lioness, and it's believed to be the largest hyena to have ever existed. It's been suggested that short-faced hyenas hunted and lived in packs just like modern day spotted hyenas, and it's believed that they used caves for shelter and protection. Over the years we have uncovered evidence to suggest that short-faced hyenas ate early humans, but it's still unclear if they scavenged or hunted us. Early human skulls have been found with bite marks that look like they came from a giant hyena, but it's completely possible that they were just scavenging a kill of another predator of the time. If they were anything like spotted hyenas then it's likely that our ancestors were common prey for them, as spotted hyenas will target primates, with baboons being one of their favourites. In the end, the spotted hyena outlived its much larger relative, and its adaptability is the main reason behind this. It's likely that the giant short-faced hyena and other giant hyenas of the time hunted early man, but once again it looks like we'll never know for certain. If you think you know of any other extinct animals that could have featured in this video then let me know down in the comments below. But for now thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.